Non-destructive testing is testing three, testing items and not destroying them. Uh, the best example is you think you broke your arm, but you're not sure. So we could cut your arm open and look to see if the bone's broken. That would be destructive testing. Or we could x-ray it and look inside and do a, a volumetric examination and look inside the full volume of your arm and be like, oh, I see a fracture there in the bone. So we do the same with airplane parts and with nuclear components to nuclear submarines and power plants and petrochemical and weld inspection and bridge inspection. We want to test them. We can't destroy them, test them, but we want to know that the weld is good. So we do a magnetic particle inspection. We do an x-ray or an ultrasound or whatever the process may be. My name is Scott Ballard and I am the department chair for the non-destructive testing program at Lindbeck Community College. And today I was teaching a non-destructive testing NET160, which is introduction to metallurgy. And metallurgy is kind of a broad term. It's like saying, you know, I study cooking. Well, what do you cook? You know, so with metallurgy, um, it's really an application of the chemistry and science and a little physics with our finished product and materials. So in today's lab, we did a real simple forging where we take metal and this is a tool steel and we heat it up and we pound on it. And then we test it all along the way for control to see did we change the hardness, did we change the microstructure of our base material to prove the concept. And the data shows that we did. We teach five specific disciplines with some variations in there. So we do a visual inspection. Everything starts out with visual, maybe dimensional. We use calipers and, and really high-tech measuring devices to determine thickness, uh, weight, uh, length, width, height, all of those parameters. Uh, we do liquid penetrant inspection, which you just use a dye and it will absorb into potential cracks, fractures, and you can't see with the naked eye, and it enhances the visual inspection. Uh, so you can see it better, like what we did today with the, with the dye penetrant inspection. And then we also do a magnetic particle inspection, which similar to dye penetrant, you apply magnetism to a magnetic material. So, and we put an iron powder, and if there's a crack, um, the magnetic field doesn't want to travel across there um, unless there's a, a magnetic material to fill the gap. And we see that uh, with, with the magnetic particles. And then the third method that we do is um, ultrasonic inspection. Mm -hmm. Similar, same technology as medical, a different application. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do radiography. We also do film and another process called computed, which is kind of a, a hybrid of those two. It's almost like an emerging technology. It's been here for a long time because of the cost of materials and time and people. We value safety. We don't want airplanes to fall out of the sky and we don't want bridges to fail. And so the, so the our expectation as, as consumers, we want to know that things aren't going to fail. How do we know that? We have to inspect them. And so the demand has greatly increased. Yes, there's a retirement. All these men and women that are my age are looking to retire and we need people to backfill. But it's really more than that in that it's, it's grown significantly on top of that. Albany, Oregon is probably about the coolest jobs that there are. If you work at Selmet, Pacific Cast, or Tie Square, all titanium casting companies, you're inspecting fighter jet components, uh, NASA parts that go to space, lots and lots of commercial airline engine parts for Pratt Whitney, Boeing, Airbus. Those are all being inspected here in Albany, Oregon. If you make your way over to uh, ATI at Millersburg, they are really big into military, nuclear uh, sub components and uh, very, very high tech military grade, hafnium, niobium, titanium, zirconium, uh, very, very uh, exotic materials. Probably one of the top exotic metal manufacturers in the country is in Albany, Oregon. 90 some percent of our students get hired out of our program. It's a huge demand. Um, last year, the Naval Shipyards in Bremerton, Washington hired four of our students. If we'd have had 10, they would have hired 10. If we'd have had 15, they would have hired 15. Um, there's a lot of jobs. The job outlook 
with the new infrastructure bill that just passed at the federal level, every single bridge that's going to get built is going to get inspected by non-destructive testing technicians. There's a, there's a near direct correlation between the number of jobs and that, and that infrastructure bill. Our average student intern is making $18.50 to $21 an hour while they're in school. And then typically a level one x-ray technician or, or visual inspector is probably going to be making around $22 to $24 an hour in Albany, Oregon. If you go to Bremerton, add $10 to that number. So when I say I have, I have students that graduated two years ago, I would say the, the lowest achieving, maybe people that aren't as motivated, are probably making $23 to $26 an hour. And then I have at least 10 or 12 that are all making over $30 an hour.